Okay, face off, face off, bunch of series family. Pierre Nicholas here again. Unfortunately, my um, co-host, Mr. Russell Washington, is not here with us today. But I've managed to find someone that I think is equally worthy of the spot. This is Ms. Lisa Halstead. Now, when we first did our first episode, I told you that Russell and I have known each other for 21 years or so. Well, Lisa and I go back 25 plus years. So I figured, who better can replace uh, Russell than someone that's known me even longer? So Lisa, welcome. How was the lunch? I'm you, satisfied. You satisfied? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you eat like a bird though. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody watching that girlish figure. Trying. I hear you. Trying but to look I, like I did 25 years ago. Yes. <laughs> Doing a very good job at it. I'm also joined by some very, very special friends over in town. Barbara Hamilton. I've known Barbara for 12 plus years. Barbara actually lives, lives in Jamaica. In a few minutes, we're going to talk to Barbara to find out what's going on in the Caribbean. I'm also joined by Deirdre Fair. And Alex, how many people asking Alex? James. Alex James. Deirdre lives in D.C., but when we start talking to her, you see what she's been up to, and you see why it's that important for her to be here today. Our kickoff subject is how do we feel about non-Africans adopting African children and moving them out of the continent. Now, I mentioned that um, we were very happy to have uh, Deirdre on the set today, and you're gonna see why in a second. Deirdre, let me turn that off over to you. How do you feel about it? Well, I would have to say, Pierre, that actually my opinion on the subject has evolved okay. over a couple of years. Um, in terms of, I used to be staunchly against it. Okay. And I think as I've gotten older and I've, um, and I've seen more and, uh, and understood more about life, I think it is important for children to have uh, nurturing environments and to be with people who love them. Can I get you to be even just a little bit explicit, if you may, as to where you've seen? Well, actually, I've seen that in the States. I mean, I see that in D.C., I see that in you know, Indianapolis or Detroit or Miami or L.A. or wherever, but in particular, having worked uh, and lived on the continent of Africa over the last 12 years, um, I see how sometimes the, um, the climate in a country uh, can make it difficult for people to have the financial resources to care for children. They love their children as any parent on the planet will love their children but unfortunately, due to the circumstances, can't provide. And, um, and I think that in terms of being able to give a child the best opportunity to, um, to have an education, to have good health care, and to grow and to thrive, sometimes parents have to make a difficult decision, or a family has to make the difficult decision to allow that child <coughs> to live with a foreigner outside the country. But you know what? Mm -hmm. I, hear what you, I hear the point that you're making. Mm -hmm. I look at the... Oprah Winfrey model mm -hmm. versus that of the Brangelina and the Madonna mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. They're extracting that beautiful jewel out of mm -hmm. the continent, mm -hmm. whereas Oprah is cultivating that jewel mm -hmm. in the continent. Mm -hmm. The Oprah Winfrey model is let's educate these um, these children so that they may um, provide for themselves in the future. Whereas Brad and Angelina mm -hmm. and uh, Madonna, mm -hmm. while they're more or less rescuing a handful, so to speak, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's still that mass that's mm -hmm. left behind. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, what Oprah is doing, I mean, that, that's the hard way. You know, I mean, that is, that's difficult in terms of the, the time um, and the money invested in that type of, um, uh, that type of venture to put together um, the school to nurture and educate these young women. Um, you know, I think what makes this difficult for me, Pierre, not to sound like I'm equivocating about this, is when you bring it down to a human level and that child and their chances for a better life, I, we can sit here and talk theory, or we could talk uh, psychology or socialization, but when you bring it down to the level of what chance is that child going to have in life? Mm -hmm. And um, again, I, you know, as we talked before, I love living um, on the continent. I lived in, in Ghana. 
I've worked in Southern Africa, work now in Eastern Southern Africa, um, and you know I, I've seen the extremely difficult conditions. And interestingly enough, I mean, you know, we mentioned the uh, the high-profile cases in the media now yes. with Madonna taking place in Malawi, and I've been to Malawi. Um, many times, and I understand the judge's ruling to not allow her to take the child out of the, the country, and that they have a law that says you have to be there eight, 18 months, reside there 18 months. But there was something else that uh, mm -hmm. there was something else that he said that was very uh, key, I think, in the ruling, mm -hmm. which was supposedly Madonna's also uh, launched other efforts, endeavors mm -hmm. that uh, supposedly have had uh, far, far-reaching. Mm -hmm. effects uh, uh, on as many as 25,000 kids or so. Mm -hmm. And then what the judge was saying is, while it's true, this child would have a better life with Madonna out of Malawi, mm -hmm. but her efforts mm -hmm. for helping the masses, the child could also benefit from that sense. Mm -hmm. So why take the child out of the country for, mm -hmm. that, for that reason as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, and I agree with him on that point as well, but still, even if she built um, a, uh, an orphan care center, and which I think you know, definitely desperately need, particularly in a country, uh, in a country like Malawi, um, <coughs> we have a lot, hundreds of thousands um, of AIDS orphans. It's not a substitute for you know a child being um, uh, fed, nurtured, educated, and raised in a safe environment. Um, by a parent because there's only a lot of times with orphan care centers they might be there for a couple hours a day okay. but they might get a meal a day there and sometimes that's the only meal that that child might have might have but in terms of the hopes of having um, a a top-notch education or the, the possibility of going to college now my you know but my bigger issue is you know you have the individual child of course as I said so I don't like to talk about it too theoretically but you know, in the case of Malawi, there's a law in place, and everybody else has to follow the law. Um, but it was wait for her the first time. It was wait for her the first time, so her for her to come back, for her to come back and ask for it to be there the second time. It, it would be very difficult. I mean, Malawi is a country of, of, of laws, um, however imperfect at times, like ours here in the United States. True. So to waive that for Donna, but not, let's say, waive it for me if I wanted to go to Malawi and adopt mm -hmm. a child. Um, I think can create a double standard and, and a problem in terms of being a country of laws and the rule of law. Now, what I say is, if Madonna is, you know, really feels this in her heart that she wants to do this and she's made a connection with this girl and she wants to raise her as her daughter, move to Malawi for 18 months. There are planes every day that go from the Longway and Blantyre, the Longway the capital, Blantyre the commercial capital, to Johannesburg to Nairobi can get you the planes that'll take you to Europe, that'll take you to the U.S., that'll take you to Asia. Um, That's my daughter. I'm sure she's got that. She has a lot of money in the bank. It's not like the rest of us that have to, yeah. yeah. It's not like the rest, exactly. She would, yeah. thank you very much for yeah. asking this. It's not like she'd have to take commercial, like, yeah. take a coach like this for 18 hours. Like, the rest of us but do. Can, can I ask a quick question? Um, does the U.S. government take an interest in the welfare of these children who are brought into this country? In, I mean, whether from Malawi or elsewhere. In other words, who, I mean, I'm sure the persons like Madonna who are doing these adoptions are well intentioned. Mm -hmm. And in high profile cases like hers and Brad and Angelino, you know, you expect them to do their best for the kids. Mm -hmm. But for ordinary folks who are taking these kids, who ensures that these children are truly well being taken care of. Yeah. It so happens that do the Lisa, foreign governments have the same the same agency that, oh. that <coughs> monitors everybody else's children because okay. the children will have to go to school. Right. You know, they will I'm assuming get a social security card and mm -hmm. be registered in mm -hmm. the United States and they have they're under the same monitoring system right. like your case. So, so, there, so there's no possibility of these kids falling off the radar screen. In other words, um, could someone, theoretically speaking, bring a child into the country? And, um, you know, because I've seen episodes like on Law and Order SBU, yeah. 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 you know, well, children being sure. brought here but as domestic it, workers, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, you're touching on a different subject altogether because they talk about the black market um, children being brought in as slaves. But that's a different issue. 